to the next part of the session yeah so next uh, our guest speaker is mona datta she is our uh, lilo member mona is an hr consultant a photographer coach and a mentor to men and women in the corporate and non corporate sectors mona has worked for 24 years in senior management capacities in hr with world leading global large and small organizations in various sectors such as it investment banking bpo and led various enterprise wide initiatives to help the organization realize strategic value and catalyze change she is an avid reader traveler a seeker on the mystic path she devotes much of her time to learn practice and teach about expanding one's awareness and knowing the self through following one's ethical so over to you uh, mona because uh, when we spoke i i really got excited about dikhi gayi so immediately i discussed with surbi that we'll have a session of mona so thank over you, to you mona thank you thank you uh, simran and uh, for the introduction and thank you uh, surbi for this opportunity to share something about this wonderful topic um i'm sh- i've shared a, uh, a screen a presentation uh, i hope most of you can see it yes i can okay yes we can yeah okay yeah, wonderful put it on the slide show mode yeah i have uh, is it no it's not coming up it's so not on take... slide show okay one minute it, it will give it uh, one minute Okay, so I'm not sure why this is happening. Uh, just one minute, just one minute. Okay, is it fine now? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, let me just briefly take you all through this concept, this word, uh, ikigai. Um, that's the way it's pronounced, ikigai. Uh, it's a Japanese word, and uh, what it basically means is uh, uh, the purpose for our being. You know what uh, what makes us get out of bed uh, every morning. Uh, what makes us? What drives us really? and uh, i think that question is pretty much front and center for a whole lot of us uh, now more than ever and uh, uh, i think many people in that process of us uh, can i request everybody to put themselves on mute please uh, or should i do it i think it would be better so if you did it yeah i'll lock the option okay <laughs> right so uh this is a, a time when we are asking questions about meaningfulness um in our lives because a lot of things that really had meaning are starting to lose uh lose that and uh, we we are starting to question a whole lot uh can you unmute yourself mona please sorry is that okay fine can everybody hear me can everybody hear me yes yeah, okay. yes we can hear you oh, all right yes yes okay so um so let's get on with uh, ikigai uh, this term actually really originated in um, japan and there are a number of books written on it uh, about areas uh, in J- in japan and other areas around the world which are called blue zones uh, so okinawa is an island in the southern part of japan where a lot we find a lot of centenarians and uh, that's something unique to this part of the world uh, because nowhere else on earth do you find that kind of quality of life uh, at a very advanced age so uh, a disproportionately large number of centenarians uh, are there and um, so there was a study done about these places which are called blue zones where you know you find uh, a different kind of quality of life and um, it was found that these people are following what they called the ikigai now what is it really what is ikigai so um 
it is defined in terms of four areas. So uh, uh, there are four circles basically, uh, which, uh, which are required to be fulfilled in order for us to be, to find our Ikigai. And those are doing what you love, doing what I'm good at, doing what I can be paid for, and um, doing what the world needs. Now, just, uh, just before I spoke, uh, there was uh, Anuradha who was talking about asking this question, uh, you know, how does what you do serve the world? You know, how, how does it serve humanity? And so I'm coming back to exactly the same question here. That is what you do uh, being of some service to any part of the world. The world here means the world that you are in, you know. And so uh, Ikigai is really, you know, the, the sweet spot, which is at the center where all these four circles intersect. And... Um, uh, the question really is about balance. So, you know, we may be, uh, can we say that we'll be able to leave out any of these circles to find Ikigai? Um, no, it's not possible. So let's take some examples here. Uh, this is just one small example. And this is because a lot of us in LinkedIn are into business world. So we may be able to understand this better. Um, and uh, uh, somebody who, who followed the Ikigai framework to find out what is it that is their Ikigai. So uh, doing an analysis or doing spending time to understand what is it that you love? What is, what are, what is the world need? Insights, guidance, mentoring, strategy, messaging. Uh, what is it that you can get paid for? So if you are, for example, from the world of uh, you know, uh, software engineering and uh, you have different passions, I know that a lot of people have different interests and passions and they want to combine all of those in a way that is me meaningful and impactful and also gives them uh, money. Uh, what am I great at? So you could be, you could love something, you, the world might need it, uh, you could get paid for it, but if you're not good at it, then again, you're not going to be able to reach your Ikigai. And at, as you can see that at the intersection of these four circles is where you find uh, these four major things, which is passion, purpose, vocation, and profession. A profession is what you're paid for, right? It's a profession is like for some of us, it will be software engineering. For somebody, it's uh, running a salon. Somebody, it's running a health business. Somebody, it's baking. Um, so that's our profession. And that's what usually gets us paid. It is, is it also our passion? Is it also something that we love to do? Is it also something that we, we are dying to, you know, uh, serve the world with? Is it something that makes us get out of bed in the morning? So those are the important questions to be asked in order for us to find our Ikigai. So let's, uh, uh, let's just listen to this uh, brief uh, um, video. Um, let me share it. Sorry. I hope it will work. Okay, so um, right now I'm not able to share the video. What we, I could recommend is listen to it at some point. Uh, Why don't you uh, put it in the chat window and we can look at it later sure, on. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, yeah. so share the link. Yeah. So I will share. Uh, okay, let me do that right away. Uh, how do I get back? Okay. Click on chat at the bottom. Chat. No, because I'm, yeah, I got that. So uh, it's come twice, the link. Uh, it's on your chat window. And this is an interesting video, uh, which you can watch later. It's from the philosopher Alan Watts. And uh, the question he's asking is really, uh, if money was no object, you know, then what is it that you would do? And this is a question that I think 
a lot of us need to ask ourselves, but we also, many of us who are children, need to guide our children in order to uh, help them find something that they are going to do the rest of their lives. Are they going to regret it after 10 years, after 20 years of doing that, saying that, you know, uh, this is not really what I wanted to do, but because there was no other option, or because I just did software engineering, or because I did my MBA, or, uh, you know, I went to study uh, uh, medicine or whatever, because my mother, father forced me to, uh, or just because I didn't know any better. So um, I think this question needs, needs to really be asked at a very young age. But of course, many of us are now beyond that time, but still, this is a time as well, even when we are way into our careers, maybe some of us are 20 years into our careers, some of us are 10 years into our careers, to ask whether if money was no object, what is it that we would be doing? So that is the starting point of, the, of, this, uh, of this inquiry. Um, just a quote to share that experts estimate that each person has about 80,000 hours in their career. And that's a really crap load of time to spend in the wrong career. So if we can not depend, uh, if we can't just depend on our passions to find out our true purpose in life, then aren't we all just a little bit screwed? Um, so how do we inspire ourselves with purpose? The organizations that we work with, you know, we, many of our organizations that uh, have a vision and a mission, um, at the same time, do we individually look at our own alignment of our own vision, mission, and our uh, what brings us joy to the organization uh, and our team vision and mission? Because if all of that aligns well, if our personal purpose aligns with our organizational purpose, if our personal values align with organization values and with organization possibilities, then imagine, imagine the great that can be created Imagine, you know, the highs that this organization will reach uh, in terms of, you know, whether it's, and, and all of these are linked to the final things that matter, you know, your revenue growth, your profit margins, uh, employee retention, employee satisfaction, everything that matters. So uh, an important question for entrepreneurs, for business owners to ask is uh, the highest effectiveness, the most positive work experience is actually comes about when this alignment happens and how can we uh, how can we do more of that i uh, obviously cannot answer this question in a brief uh, chat but you know that is i'm just pointing you here to the question that you should ask and of course then there's a whole lot of work to be done in that sphere in order to come to this alignment so let me share a bit of a brief exercise on how do you find your ikigai right so i showed you those four circles in the uh, you know uh, of the of Ikigai, which is finding what you love, what the world needs, what you can get paid for, and what you're good at. So uh, you can use, just draw these four circles. If you simply do a Google on Ikigai, you will get these four circles. Um, even this presentation that I'm sharing here, if any of you want it, I can share, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that matter uh, later on with you. And you fill in the circles with your own answers to each of this. And um, Look at the places where your answers overlap, okay? So here are some inquiries to get you started. For example, if you were answering the question, what do I love to do? So answer, look at the question, what would you do if you don't have to worry about making money? How would you spend your time on a long vacation or a, even a weekend? What's exciting to you? What do you really find fun, interesting, motivating? And the biggest question, which I find really, really gets you going, is what will you regret most on your deathbed? I think we should all do this exercise where we imagine ourselves at our funeral and, and ask really, what would be my regret if I died tomorrow? Because that really gives you a whole different perspective about what you should be doing. What is it that you really, really love? What is it that you really wanted to do? But you somehow put it aside because of various many other things, you know, how life gets in the way. So other questions like what puts you in flow? When are you so immersed in your activity that you completely lose sense of time and space? Um, things like that. Questions about what am I good at? So think about your talents, skills, think about 
tasks you ex excel at? What do you, what do you find really effortless to do you do? What do you pe what do people admire you for? What are the things that you uniquely do best? So I was earlier in my previous avatar, uh, I was a HR consultant. I, I worked in the space of implementing HR technology for large and small organizations. Uh, you know, I'm, I've done tons and tons of work with doing PeopleSoft and SAP and Oracle and all of that. But really, I think my passion was to help people find, uh, uh, find meaning. Uh, and I found this was coming naturally to me that, you know, people would enjoy those conversations with me. And that's how I came to my uh, Ikigai as finding my, uh, as, as, a, as a path to, uh, you know, coaching and mentoring uh, people. So, um, so that's an important question to ask. What do you really find effortless? What do people admire you for? Because this is something I, I got very frequent feedback on that, uh, you know, this is something uh, that the, your coaching makes a difference to my life. Your coaching makes, helps me understand or um, helps me move certain things that are stuck in, in my life. Um, third question is, what does the world need? So the, the, the questions here that you could elaborate on are, what can you give to your world, to your culture or to your family? What talent can you use to make the world a better place? What problems really would you like to help solve? What issues in your community, your city or your country touch you emotionally? This emotionally is a very important question. I think because our lives are guided by emotions and unless we really feel passionate about something, I don't think that we'll be able to give it the effort that's needed to create anything. So even if you already volunteer for an organization, you do some great work, uh, that can give you a solid clue about what you really deeply care about. And um, other questions that you could uh, ask is, what do others see that you have to offer the world? Sometimes we are, have a blind spot. Sometimes we are ourselves not aware about what is it that we have in ourselves. Uh, we may have great skills and talents and strengths, but we, we sometimes are not so confident about it. And asking others who have known us well who have uh, uh, confidence in us and who are able to give us some good feedback is a great starting point, both for the question on what the world needs and also the question of what am I great at? And the last question, what can I get paid for? Because if you fulfill all these three quadrants, but if you're not getting paid, you're obviously not going to do that. Uh, we just all need money to survive. So simply list the things that you've been currently getting paid to do, whether you like them or not. What is your profession? What do you get paid for? Uh, what do others value about you? What is the real reason that people pay you? Do they pay you only for your qualifications and your talents, talents or could there be another reason? So uh, I also started a different career after I left my full-time corporate job as a photographer. Uh, I was only doing photography as a hobby and hobby as, hobbies are actually a great starting point for you to look at because those are your passions. Those are something that you'll really love to do. And uh, I just kept doing it. I had no interest really in, be in becoming a photographer, but at some point, um, some people started saying, oh, you click such great photographs that we'd like to pay you for it. And I think that was a starting point. You know, what can I get paid for? And for, so I started with one assignment of doing portraits for women. And that one assignment became 10 and then it became 20. And so I got an alternative career. So, you know, that's how things start. They may take time, yes, because you have to be good at it. You just can't get paid for something you're not good at. So, uh, filling in these four circles for yourself is important. I've just shared some very brief ideas. And if you are interested further in exploring this, of course, you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one at any point of time, and I can help you, guide you through this process. So, um, so as I said, hobby as, as a starting point for your Ikigai. All of us have so many different hobbies. You know, some of us like blogging, uh, reading, golfing, gardening, music, computers, sports, camping, biking, making videos, podcasting. I mean, there's enough things to do in this world. And because we are living in an internet age, um, you know, the, the options are really, you know, mind-boggling. 
I mean, people have made careers out of just what, doing what they love. And some of the most impossible careers are like, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard of these careers, like a uh, fortune cookie writer, people walker. You've heard of dog walkers? There are people walkers also, you know? Like you, uh, somebody in real life. Have two, three minutes left, then yes. we'll have question and answer. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm just ending this now. Um, so hobbies is a great way to do this. Uh, I'm just sharing these resources, which you would like to, uh, you might like to reference. Uh, I'll share them on the chat as well. The video I've already shared by Alan Watts. Here are uh, two books. Uh, which you might want to read, Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life, and How to Ikigai, Lessons from Finding Happiness and Living Your Life's Purpose. There's also a link to a quiz. Uh, it's available for free, 20 questions to determine if you're living your Ikigai. Uh, and uh, uh, another, the, the second book, uh, Tim Tamashiro, is also available as a TED Talk. So here are some amazing resources, and uh, there's a lot more to explore. Um, some links that I'm sharing about myself and yes, happy to answer questions and, you know, uh, from here. Uh, so Mona, uh, Tushar has a question for you. Tushar, yes. would you like to ask? Can you stop sh sharing first? Yes, uh, I'll just so. stop the share. Yes. Yeah. You can go uh, on the... Tushar, Tushar wanted to ask something to Mona. So, yeah, there was Tushar, a question. Are you, are you online? I don't think so. Yeah, he's there, Tushar Kohli. He's there, yeah. yeah so in the, in the chat, there was a question while you were talking. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, how so do we know question. what helps the world? Yeah. How do you know what helps the world? Hmm. Can so, uh, there dif differing opinions on it? For instance, you might think environment is important. I might think religion. And unless we know what helps the world which is already so subjective, how we arrive, what the humanity needs. So, so this is, this is not questions. like, uh, you know, a single answer for everyone. The, no. the person, what, my, what I think the world needs will be very different from what you think the world needs. And the world needs different, different things. It just needs uh, all of us to really, uh, you know, do what is what we are great at, what we are best at. So I might think that, yes, that the world needs somebody to work with environmental issues and that's my cause that's the way I look at the world and uh, you know you might think about you know different different aspects you might think about what the world needs is completely different thing so yes of course it is subjective it cannot be the single it cannot be single thing for everyone so I think Mona you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, world is different for everyone. So uh, I need to see my world from my yes, perspective. You need to see my, your world. Yeah. Your world and your, your strengths and what you are great at, right? So your world, yeah. world view really, your world view comes in from where you have come, from where you live mm -hmm. and from where I have come, you know, I think that the world needs um, a lot of beauty and love. And so yeah. therefore my strengths give that to the world. So I create beautiful pictures and images for which I get yeah. paid. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. any other question for Mona? I have a question. <clears throat> Should I, can I, can I go on? Yes, please. Yes, yes, please, Tanya. Yeah. Uh, Mona, uh, it was a very useful session and thank you for the useful session. Uh, my question is that, uh, is Ikigai and uh, wheel of life related because fortunately I attended a webinar earlier in the day where the speaker was talking about wheel of life yeah. and how to create that and uh, dividing your wheel into broader six sections. Yes. Uh, family, business, personal passions, yes. Yes. personal growth and spirituality. Yes. So uh, what do you think? Like you gave an exercise and yes. I did an exercise earlier in the day. So um, are they related to each other? I, I think that, that there are two very uh, uh, interesting ways to look at, at a, uh, maybe there's an overlap in the question there as well. The wheel of life would tell you which uh, is, is, is a framework which might uh, allow you uh, uh, sorry, there's, there's just some noise coming in the back. 
Yeah, so uh, which might allow you to um, investigate those four questions of the Ikigai framework even better. So for example, uh, when you're looking at um, what is it that the world needs? Now, the, you're the, the wheel of life that you defined, you know, these are the different areas of your world, right? Your spiritual area, your, your business area, your personal life. Yeah. So all of these have different demands. Okay. Yeah. And so yes. uh, what, what is it that you could give all of that? And, and is there mm -hmm. anything common that emerges from this? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mona. So, uh, any other question? I messaged Mona today. So, I kind of know what my purpose is, everything, but I still feel a burnout. Uh -huh. So, I love what I do. I yeah. I am very excited every morning and I'm like, I find it hard to sleep because I'm excited about things I want to do. So I don't know. I'm probably on the other end of the spectrum. I have this opportunity where I can do what I want and yes. I'm doing everything. Yeah. But uh, it's still very hard. So I have found a yeah. purpose with, yeah. and I found ways of like loving it and uh, getting paid for it. But I think um, we need to uh, like, you know, choose our battles as well. Yeah. So coming back to the question of balance, and Ikigai is yeah, all about balance. balance, right? So if you overdo what you're good at, if you overdo anything, uh, you come out of balance. And uh, everything in nature is, is about balance, you know, whether it's yin or yang or whether it's day or night, um, uh, you know, whether it's the seasons, we just have to look at nature, you know, nature is the perfect teacher for, uh, for finding balance. And uh, so I think the message for you is to slow down, or learn to say no to a whole lot of things. Um, we all do that all the time. Uh, we're saying yes to everything, trying to please. And we, most of us are people pleasers, especially women. So uh, we just have to learn a new skill. Step back, just say no. So I think so will be uh, only one question we can ask. Time yeah, is I, uh, our last okay. two minutes. So, I mean, just a last point I have. Pratyush on the line. Mona, thanks so yes, much. Uh, it's a good session. Uh, so uh, not a question. It's a. I wanted to know your views. So uh, so so this one. Uh, Ikigai was a new concept to me. I had not uh, read or heard about this. Uh, right. So do you think it works for people with resources in hand, and we have time to go back and reflect on these quadrants in life? And uh, the larger, as you were to call them, cattle class or, or masses would would be would have the sort of luxury to reflect on different segments or just do what can, you know, let their lives move on. So I don't think that this question is relevant or is irrelevant to anybody, whether which class or which okay. category anybody, uh, you know, uh, belongs to. Because, um, uh, you know, I think everyone, regardless of what, where, where they come from, everybody longs for a successful, personally meaningful, productive, uh, and purpose-driven life. Mm -hmm. I think even the the person on the street, you know, who the the vendor, the your uh, guy who's selling you vegetables, even he wants that. So this, I think, this journey is really uh, everybody wants to reach finally uh, find their ikigai or. Uh, you know, find their purpose for being. And uh, if we enable enough people to help find that, and if that aligns, like I said, with whatever the organization is trying to also do, then the possibilities are limitless. It's practically, you know, that organization and those people will be unstoppable. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say something. It's not a question. Uh, just a compliment for the whole session. Thank you. Uh, between the lockdown and numerous questions and numerous, numerous things, a lot of things going around us. This was such a calming session, both the sessions. And uh, I mean, hats off to the speakers and the people who arranged it. Uh, both the session, they led to the to intros more of introspection, like we have to do with ourselves. Yeah, you have to do with yourself. So, great, great session. Very much required in today's scenario. The answer always lies within us. 
so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, i think uh, my input would be first of all the willingness has to be there if we are willing to change if we are willing to think if we are willing to change our perspective if we are willing to think about our thought then we can change then this session would be very very useful so there are people who are very reluctant or ye sab samajh nahi aaya ye sab upar ki baatein hain but believe me in my life many ups and downs have been there but willingness thi to ye sab suna sikha kiya and it's very very helpful